Everyone, welcome to researchmd.com. Another great presentation today. Uh, let me introduce myself, Dr. Pramil Charyat, uh, uh, program director, practicing physician. I run two programs: um, so internal medicine director and transitional medicine residency director, and associate professor of medicine to large medical school in the United States. So let's get into our topic. We are continuing our lectures on antibiotic. Make sure you go ahead and uh, review our previous lectures. Today we have reached third generation cephalosporins, okay? That's the main topic today. So let's take a step back. Let's look at our whiteboard and how are we planning to approach this? Again, so we're talking about cephalosporin today, third generation cephalosporin. We're gonna look at the structure of cephalosporin versus third generation, the difference. And then we're going to talk about the mechanism of action. We're going to look at the resistance, and then we look at the coverage, activity, gram positive, gram negative, anaerobic coverage, and then general characteristics. And then we talk about the drugs, and we'll finish it up, okay? So let's look at the structure. First thing we need to look at the cephalosporin, overall cephalosporin, how does it look, okay? Two rings we need to know. One is dihydrothiazine ring. Remember that, dihydrothiazine ring and our famous what? Beta-lactam ring, right? Everybody know the beta-lactam ring and um, dihydrothiazine ring. Now, what's the difference? In penicillin, instead of the dihydrothiazine ring, they got thiosolidine ring. Remember that. It's very, very important. Okay. Now, let's look at the difference between cephalosporin and the third generation cephalosporin. Look at the R structure. This two structure, that's what they usually modify. They modified R1 and R2 and make new drugs. That's what they do. Every, I mean, every year, yeah, third generation, fourth generation, R1 and R2, that attachment they modify, okay? Now, once we do that, let's look at the mechanism of action. Again, penicillin binding protein. They act by inhibiting the penicillin binding protein. When you inhibit that, what's going to happen to our peptidoglycan? Peptinoglycan synthesis will not be there. Cell wall is going to be affected. Bacteria cannot survive. Very important to know. Now let's look at resistance to the major organism. There's a mnemonic for you. It's a mnemonic is called LAME. L-A-M-E. L is listeria. A is for atypical, which is Legionella. And then M, mycoplasma. E is enterococci. So for this organism, it's resistant. It'll not be, it's not going to work, okay? Remember that. Now, next thing we have to look at is when you talk about third generation cephalosporin, look at the broad spectrum activities. Let's just start with the gram positive. Streptococcus pyogene, streptococcus viridians, many strep pneumonia, modest activity of staph aureus. Never use it against methylene sensitive staph aureus. Okay? It's not going to work. Great point. Remember that. Gram negative is going to work against like most of the some E. coli. So we do use the subtraxone, not all of them. Subtraxone is a very good for like urinary tract infection, right? Remember, some Klebsiella, Proteus, Haemophilus, Moraxella, Neisseria, and Gonorrhea. We use subtraxone, it's a classic drug uh, to treat the sexually transmitted disease. Anaerobes, what do we see? Remember, don't forget it, poor activity, okay? So there's no anaerobic coverage here. And spirochid is going to work against Borre Borrelia, remember that. Now, next thing we have to look at the general characteristics, therapeutic concentration achieved in most tissues, almost every tissue, bone, joint, bile, remember bile is very important, we'll come back to now. And then it reach like, I mean, CSF also, it can penetrate the CNF, CSF and kind of you can use it in many childs. remember that, okay? Now, let's look at the drug. The, the prototype drug in this group is cefotaxin. Uh, can give IV or IM, one to two gram QA, okay? But the most common drug in the United States we use is what? Ceftriaxone. Make sure everything you know about ceftriaxone. The what is the dosage? Given by IV. And uh, one gram every 12 hours, and you can go up to two gram also. And the thing about the subtraxone, it can reach, a couple of things we need to know, it can reach high concentrate. I mean, it can, first of all, it can um, displace albumin, okay? 
uh, from bilirubin. So what's going to happen is this, this, when you give subtraction, you can have live bilirubin in the neonate, and then it can deposit in the brain, have like brain complication. Okay, remember that. Subtraction, don't use in the neonat. Affinity, increase affinity for albumin and displaces bilirubin from albumin. And so there's going to be increased bilirubin. And you know what happens already, like in the brain can get deposited, kernic dress and all those things can happen. Okay. One more thing subtraction does is concentration get very high in bile. And they combine with the calcium and can cause pseudolithiasis. Remember that, okay? This is the two adverse event. And next one, we have suffixim, oral, 200 milligram, Q12 hours. Let's say if you want a third generation cephalosporin, one thing oral, you can use this, and then you can use cephalodoxine, 200 mg Q12. Now, this is, septacidine is very, very important. Look at the anti-pseudomonas coverage, okay? So you do have some kind of pseudomonas coverage when you start the third generation cephalosporin. Remember that, don't forget it. Septacidin, and you got cefopyrazone, IV, one gram Q8, it can cause disulfiram reaction like an alcohol, remember that, okay? And then remember the most important point about subtraxone, neonates, don't use it, displaces albumin from bilirubin, um, and then increased bilirubin can go up. Okay, so it's, uh, it's in a nutshell, let's talk about like everything we covered about the third generation cephalosporin. The most important drug we use probably, I would say, like ceprexone. Um, remember that, and it does not have any activities of anaerobe, but when you come to the third generation cephalosporins, we have some little bit of pseudomonas activity. If you want to use a third generation cephalosporin, septacidin is a good drug for pseudomonas and then always remember the subtracts or a neonate can cause increased bilirubin those are the main very important and remember the mnemonic we set up here uh, listeria atypical organism example legionella mycoplasma enterococci is now going to work lame thank you so much for watching we'll be back with another presentation soon god bless